Hello all! Thanks for joining us on Two Analyzers and Beyond, the talk show where two analyzer folks discuss the process analytics world and topics beyond analyzer. Hi, I am Quarantine Thierry, sales manager here at Bartek US for our process analytical technology, PAT Group. And today, we actually have a three man show during which one of our suppliers, Fitalk, will be joining me to discuss how Bartek provides custom solutions by partnering with third parties. As you know, the Bartek Group manufactures numerous physical property analyzers at both our US and German factories. But most of our products would be considered standard. We do do some customization, but when it reaches out beyond our manufacturing capabilities, we have no other choice but to call out third parties. So with this in mind, guys, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having us. Glad to be here. Glad to have you guys here. Why don't you tell me more about yourselves? Yeah, sure. So, hello, my name is Long No. I'm one of the regional business development managers for FitTalk uh, here in Houston. I am responsible for the Western United States. I was with Discount Tire for about 15 years. Interesting. Half of my life, I would say. Uh, but obviously this, this opportunity came about, wonderful opportunity and really and truly, I'm, I'm just passionate about serving people and, and taking care of people. So uh, I don't live far from here, Kingwood, a couple acres with my family. I've got a wife, three kids. Um, outdoors, we stay a lot outside. Outdoors is fun. Outdoors is fun, <laughs> especially in Texas. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of it. So, yeah, I mean, we spend a lot of time outside. Obviously, there's always ongoing projects and yard work to do, so those have become my hobby. And trees that fall that need to be chopped off. Oh, I do a lot of that. Stuff. I know the feeling. <laughs> Get the kids with the chainsaws. It's, it's one of the, those have became a lot of hobbies of mine, which I enjoy. So, Matt, how about yourself? Yeah, thanks again for having us on the show. We're really excited about it. Always a pleasure. Here. Um, my name is Matt Blumstrom. I am the vice president of FitTalk globally now. So I'm responsible for the FitTalk group of companies um, when it comes to sales and marketing. Um, and I've been here for about two years. Um, <clears throat> my career path maybe is a little bit uh, non-typical. Uh, I started in the industry, in the oil and gas industry, as a diver. So oh. doing work subsea under the water. Um, in the hot tropicals of the Caribbean? <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I got the ability to travel all over the world, which was very cool. Which was really nice. I got to see a lot of different places, got to see a lot of different things, but spent most of my time in subsea oil and gas. Um, and then over time, um, just a series of opportunities led me to the sales side um, of things, and I became familiar with FitTalk, um, and obviously now I'm here today. Uh, similar to Long, I spent a lot of time outside because I have five children. My wife and I live um, just north of Houston, and um, so we spend most of our time Outside, camping, youth sports, that's typically what we do with most of our time. What, what sports, if you don't mind me asking, what do you guys do? Um, we like to uh, ride dirt bikes as a family. I have uh, three boys, yes. so most of them like to ride dirt bikes, and so we get outside to do that. And we've got one of our kiddos is pretty passionate about baseball, and baseball in Texas is pretty serious. So yes. <laughs> we yes. spend a lot of our weekends <laughs> just doing baseball. That's fun. It is yeah. really fun. Well, guys, um, I'm glad that we got to know you a bit better. Um, now, why don't you talk a bit about FitTalk so that uh, well, we get a good understanding and just you know an introduction for for all of our viewers uh, for them to yeah understand better not only what you did with me but as a whole, FitTalk is a really large company, and I'm sure there's many other things than what you did for me that you guys actually provide. Yeah, so FitTalk was founded um, in 1998, so about 20 years ago. Um, around the idea of a commodity product, actually. Um, and we found a lot of our success and growth really centered around providing solutions um, and having a continuous improvement culture. Um, and fast forward to today, we have locations all over the world um, with the manufacturing base and sales quarters here, which is where okay. we office out of, um, in Stafford, oh, I Texas. I see. Um, sales and service centers in the Middle East as well. <clears throat> We have several facilities in China, um, one in Wuhan, 
that's a mass manufacturing base and actually a part of an ongoing expansion to an even larger facility, um, which would be fully automated manufacturing. On the top of your mind, do you know size-wise more or less? Uh... Um, the, the final facility in Wuhan, once the expansion is complete, will be over 100,000 square meters. Ooh, square meters? Yes. Oh, that's big. Yeah, it's a, signific it's big. a significant facility. So we'll have a technology center there. We'll actually have a, a small um, education and training facility as well for the local community, um, which we're pretty excited about. That's good. The other two facilities in China, one is in Shenzhen. Mm -hmm. That's also a manufacturing base for mass manufacturing. And we also have a facility in um, Shuzhou, which is a tube mill. So this okay. is where we produce all of our tube products um, from seamless tubing, seamless stick tubing to coil tubing. And this is pretty unique for us because most manufacturers of instrument grade valves and fitting pressure products don't actually manufacture their own tube. Um, so for us, this is actually a strength, something newer to our group of companies, but we're also really excited about it. I see that you have a, a site in Germany. Um, I see R&D Manufacturing Center. Can, can you share a bit more about this? Because as you know, Bartek is a German group and we have many factories in Germany. Yeah, so I think it's probably fair at this point to say that um, the reason we do this is because the Germans are really good at certain things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so we do a lot of our research and development first article testing at that facility. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the ability to manufacture a good portion of our product line. Okay. Yeah, so as you can see, um, these facilities really have allowed us to have a global footprint. Um, and they're strategically placed so that we can draw on uh, the core strengths of each region. Mm -hmm. um, and part of this is the new plant being brought online. You, you see in the U.S. we say that it's manufacturing based. So we're currently in the process as we speak of bringing manufacturing online and that project will be complete by the end of this year, 2020. Okay. And then the expansion um, and an additional facility in South Korea should be finished by the end of 2021. Very exciting. So lots of activity, a lot of movement happening on the manufacturing side of FitTalk as we continue to grow to be able to support the, the market. So do you get to go to China a lot? Um, so we have to really focus on saying get to and transitioning that to have to, from have to <laughs> to get to, yeah. Um, but yes, I have been um, to be able to see the facilities. I think it's really important that you do get the opportunity to go see the facility because um, that's really where we started. We owe a lot of our success to the people that are there that make the work happen behind the scenes. So it's nice to be able to go see that, see the level of detail that gets put into products like this um, that oftentimes you really wouldn't think have that much care and that much dedication to making a product. So when can I sign up for Chinese classes with you? <laughs> uh, I'll let you too. know whenever I do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what is that? So as I mentioned, um, FitTalk has uh, several standard product lines, and um, these have just been developed over time. The first mm -hmm. one that was developed and where we got our start was general instrumentation valves and fittings, and that's what we labeled this, but really this is instrument grade products from a 16th of an inch to two inch. So that's everything from fittings and adapters to uh, valves, automated valves, and even um, some manifold style products mm -hmm. that go into that. We also have a medium and high pressure product line, which allows us to get up to the 60,000 PSI range. And I'm sure I'm guessing. Um, actually, there's several markets that this is applicable to, from um, aerospace, so a lot of the ground control sport for aerospace, um, pulp and paper. There's an entire water blast industry that uses a lot of this product. Um, so lots of opportunity for the medium and high pressure. <clears throat> That closely mimics the general instrumentation in terms of offering. It's just mm -hmm. a much higher pressure range. High purity and ultra high purity products. This recently was combined as we continue to develop into the semiconductor market, but that's where the majority of this is used, but also in pharmaceutical, biopharmaceutical applications. And then um, the sampling systems, is it is our only systems level product line. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> But we do have a little bit of overlap there or um, something in common when it, to, when it comes to sample systems because oftentimes where our sa sample systems would be used, Bartek too would True. have instruments in True. those places. True. So that covers um, a closed loop sampling system product that's pretty a pretty wide range. 
And then last, but obviously not least, I spoke about this earlier, but only because we're just so excited about the product in itself. It's, um, it's a newer range for us. Um, Tube had been a part of the FitTalk product line in general for general instrumentation, for medium mm -hmm. high pressure, and even high purity, ultra high purity, but never did we have enough of a capability for it to be its own product line. So this is our last product line for now, um, and that is Tube Products. From, you said 16th to 2 inch. Yeah, that's 16th of an inch to 2 inch. Um, seamless stick tube, even coil tube. So as you can see, the, the product lines in general are, there's a, there's a pretty big range, and this has just happened gradually over time, but really the way this has happened is based on our approach to the market. So we typically will take an opportunity, any opportunity, to help provide a solution where a solution may be needed. And oftentimes this leads to us developing a new product or even improving on an existing product which is actually how our product lines just continue. Okay, um, this is probably my favorite part, um, what I'm most passionate about. Um, we oftentimes talk at FitTalk about the product, mm -hmm. and, and we've, we've really done a good job of getting that part right, but we still have a whole lot of responsibility to the market in general, um, and that's, that's really where we come into play. So this just gives you a good idea of where we put our focus, and number one, is customer focus and market driven. This is really, for us, this is the pulse of FitTalk. This is, this is where we started, and this is really who we are, still who we are today. Mm -hmm. Second is innovative solutions. So sometimes this could sound like it might be really complex, but mm -hmm. this could be something as basic as tailoring a delivery or having supply chain solutions to make sure that we can respond in a timely manner um, to the demand of whatever the market might need. Um, but beyond that, even exotic materials, being able to respond quickly by having exotic material, new products and custom solutions, and even the way we approach developing existing products in the market, just so that we can continue that, like yes. I mentioned earlier, that continuous improvement culture um, is a big part of what we do. Third, engineering excellence. Um, as an organization, we put a great deal of stock in our engineering program. We have over 60 engineers specifically dedicated to new product development mm -hmm. and continuous improvement on existing products. So each of the, in that, inside of that group, each of those engineers are dedicated at least once a year to release, release a new development on an existing product or develop an entirely new product. So there's constantly new activity with us when it comes to product development and product improvement. And yeah, I think that's really what you want to do. I, um... One of my, my former bosses used to say, you know, if you're not ahead of the game, you're falling behind. So you always want to be bringing up new stuff. You, wanna, you always want to be innovative because otherwise you're falling behind. So, yeah, that's, that's the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a big part of why we're successful is um, not resting on previous accomplishments, not getting comfortable with what we have done, but constantly striving to, to improve. And not just on the product side, but also on the quality side. Mm -hmm. So... Um, we have a great deal of passion for quality. This really goes a great deal beyond the product. Most would assume oftentimes that this is just centered around the product. But for us, we really believe this is a key factor in what sets FitTalk apart. Um, yes, it is about our product. And yes, we produce a quality product. But also our service and the details behind what we do, all the way down to how we package our product. Yeah, I, I believe it's, it drives the people behind the product. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And last but definitely not least um, is our global manufacturing system. Mm -hmm. For us, this is something a, that's a part of our organization that will just continue to evolve. As we grow, um, this will continue to evolve. Our strategy with manufacturing is centered around being able to maintain competitive deliveries um, and cost-effective products while having a touch on all the major markets globally. Mm -hmm. So being positioned to be able to support all of those major markets, but then also making sure that we draw on, like I mentioned earlier, the, the strengths of each region so that we can produce the best product and maintain these things that we originally came with. Well, thanks a lot for this presentation of the FITA group. I think it was very instructive. I even learned stuff myself. Yeah, good. Um, now, I cannot not say anything about, you know, this beaker that you brought. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I recognize this. I know. because that before. Yes, because we... Uh, we put one of these with one of our customers with uh, this moisture pool. So, um, 
basically the, the background of the story is that we had a customer that uses uh, this moisture probe, it's a high growth fill product line in the, in the process. And in order to match uh, measurements, they wanted to put this in the lab. Now the thing is, this so just real quick, they wanted to they wanted to be able to mimic yes. what they were getting in the field using the same product from in Bartek, the lab. but they wanted to be able to mimic that in the lab. In the lab, okay. The thing though is that this is this was designed for uh, installation in the process. Mm -hmm. We we have done and we do do sometimes <coughs> lab installations, but it's not our core business. So we don't have the solutions to be able to install this in the lab. I mean, we can provide the old system. But in the end, for them to be actually able to insert it in a, well, in a measurement cell, like sure. we, we don't provide that. And through one of my colleagues, that's when I got in touch with Long, and you guys came up with this. So the idea was, those are, there are multiple ports where the customer can put temperature probes, sure. uh, pressure probes. But most importantly, our moisture probe. Yeah. So they can circulate this, I mean, I say this, they can circulate the sample through this beaker. We call it a beaker. You guys might have a different name for yeah, it. Yeah, sure. And, um, you know. And get a representative sample. Mm -hmm. And so for us, that was that was a big gain because then we were able to well, meet the customer's demand, <clears throat> customer's need by partnering with you guys. So that's, um, yeah, that's, that's what I... That's what I've enjoyed. That's what I have been able to uh, to capitalize on. So you know, with this being said, what can you tell us about this speaker? What's what's so unique about this speaker? Because I definitely see benefit to it, but I'm sure there's a, a lot more that I don't see. In yeah, a piece of equipment. I mean, absolutely. It's it was very exciting when the opportunity came about. I mean, just kind of like Matt mentioned earlier, our bid talk has has been, still is to this day, is just solutions driven. That's just, mm -hmm. that's just who we are. Um, I mean, we were able to utilize our strengths in supply chain and engineering to do a project like this. Pretty incredible. Because um, this is all fit talk, fit talk valve, fit talk fittings. You guys, as you said, the engineering. You also, <laughs> um, the, the the core body of the beaker was also welded at your facility. So this is a fully 100% um, fit up product. Yeah, absolutely, 100% manufactured by us. That's very good, that's very good. That's very practical. <laughs> that's the kind of thing we, we cannot do. That's what I was alluding to earlier, that whenever we get into, I would say highly customized at this point, uh, we have to get to, <coughs> we have to get in touch with a third party um, so that we can deliver this kind of finished product. Yeah, so while we have our, you know, our wide range of standard products, mm -hmm. um, we, we pride ourselves. We, we pride ourselves in remaining flexible and producing and manufacturing, you know, something like this. Like in this mm -hmm. case, we were able to call upon our project delivery team, which is a, a group, a team of supply chain and engineering roles that focus specifically on you know the quick turn projects okay so that would be the yeah for me it would pretty much always be this kind of very customized products so I, i'm guessing that there's a team i would be working with yeah, for yeah all absolutely yes yeah. yeah anytime anytime we have a, a lot of people call it a custom solution but really if it's a one-off or if it's a solutions driven um, opportunity then that is what we use um, we use our project delivery team and it's a smaller group of people, um, but specifically focused on taking a quicker turn, something mm -hmm. that didn't exist prior to us having the discussion, and then getting that pumped out from engineering and into our manufacturing system, and obviously into your hands in a relatively short time frame. So the question is, is there anything we cannot do? <laughs> well, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to draw the line somewhere. Yeah, um, in the wheelhouse. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it's still for us. This still needs to remain. Um, centered on our strength. So True. most of this, much like Bartek, this is still centered around the analytical side of the business when it comes to instrumentation, right? So this is just a series of our compression fittings, our tube fittings, um, our ability to take raw material and put it into a specific form, in this case, the beaker, 
and then obviously a valve, um, which is also something that we manufacture. So uh, this is truly a perfect example of how we got our start and, um, and where we are today. What I can share with you though, what I can share with everyone is that, so the, um, the one that's currently at the customer site has been in use for, I wanna say six months? Yeah, probably more than six months now. And uh, it's working well, it's working really well. So we had it coded. Um, uh, internally, right? Internally, yeah. thank you. We had it coded with uh, a hygrophilic special coding and it's working great for them. They've commented, they've shared that, uh, yeah, they're able to use it, they run many different types of samples and they're, yeah, it's working really great for them. So it's great, true success. I mean, it, awesome. You know, they, it did what we wanted it to do and it's working as we were expecting it to work. So we need to do this more often. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Guys, uh, we're gonna take a small break here. Okay. And then uh, after the break, we'll come back and discuss more about general events and how you know, the talk is evolving in the world. We'll see you in a minute. Man, I can't believe I have to fix this again. It's the third time this month. I can't believe management would go to the supplier. This stuff ain't worth a penny. Man, tell me about it. I've been twice this week to the South Campus to try to fix the same exact issue. But guess what? What? I'm tired of missing my lunch for this. I'm tired of missing my family time for this. I'm not taking it no more. We need to go with a different supplier. It's unfortunate, isn't it? Well, if you had a Bartek system, this is how this would look like. Guess what? What? We went with Bartek, and I ain't got to worry about fixing this anymore, and it works every time. Now I can eat my lunch. If you want your techs to be like those two happy campers, then reach out to Bartek. Feel the difference that superior equipment makes on scheduled maintenance as well as technician satisfaction. Reach out to us and let us show you how you can improve your plant performance as well as solving your lunchtime issues. All right, all. So welcome back. Guys, that was very interesting. Fit talk introduction, we got to talk about um, our specific projects. Now, more generally speaking, you know, we're, we're currently in the middle of a, I'm just gonna say a new world, very interesting economic situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can you share with us how Fit talk has adapted and how Fit talk is working uh, through and with this uh, new current or this new normal, let's put it like that. Yeah, Quarantine, it's a great question. Um, and it, you mentioned something now, and you also mentioned something earlier uh, to the likes of, if you're not growing, you're dying, right? And that doesn't really wait on anybody. True. Yeah, over true. time, true. forever, true. that's been the case. So you also mentioned adaptability, and uh, that's really been a key, a key for us, is making sure that we've been able to adapt to whatever the changes um, have been. Yeah, so us being on a, a web-based interview just like this, is, is something that obviously wasn't yeah, wasn't extremely common before, but we're seeing companies all over the place beginning to do this. So more of your sales and more of your marketing activity is happening um, online. Um, you know, I'd also say that this is a great equalizer. So there's economics, economic up and downs regionally all year long, every year, you know, and, and um, different industries happen at different times but this has really been the great equalizer. No, no industry has been immune. Truly every, every industry across the world has felt the effects of this. And I've, I'm super proud that, to be at Fit Talk and see the way that things have been handled, um, that we've had a minimal impact to our staff and that, that we've been able to continue focusing on um, some of the things that we do have control over in a time like this. And like Matt stated, you know, it's a very tough climate, but like you said, adaptability, we have seen just the way we have adapt internally, externally, and just how we operate from a sales standpoint. Do you think we'll ever revert to business the way it used to be, or do you foresee some sort of hybrid and you know, in, in you, you calling on some customers, what have, what have you seen, how has it been for you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough sometimes to get some people over the phone and, and get on video, but when you're able to run through the process of this and see the pro productivity from it, Matt was explaining a little bit earlier, you could probably 
mention a little bit. Yeah, so um, we were having a conversation just before this started. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, to answer your question directly, I don't know, I, my, this is my belief, I don't think we'll ever see things go back to the way they were before because there have been so many efficiencies. If, this, if you've taken this as an opportunity, there have been so many efficiencies realized in this process. So um, where our sales team, which what you were mentioning, used to travel at least a week out of the month, a lot of times that was for prospects. But we can spend 80% um, of our time over a virtual meeting, on email, on phone calls, and get a lot of that prospect process yes. out of the way. And that's ultimately a cost savings for a company. And I know we're not the only company that has experienced that. So I would say just that alone would lead me to believe that we will never go back to where we came from. I like the term that you used. It would probably be a hybrid. So we take some of the really good things that we've learned during this time, we're still walking through it, and apply that to how we used to do business and hopefully come out on the other side of this thing even stronger than we were when we went into it. Yeah, that's what we also see, or that's what we also foresee the a hybrid system just because, as you said, you know, lots of travel was spent for, I'm not going to say useless, but not necessarily <coughs> high return investment kind of, kind of trips. Yeah, sure. So I think that all of these in the future will kind of disappear. And... Um, Travel will be restricted, I say, to more or higher chance projects or projects of bigger importance. I, I would also agree with you on that. That's also what I'm saying. Yeah. So in a nutshell, I would just say that we've really taken the opportunity to focus, to shift our focus more internally during this period and do everything we can to create more value um, for our internal teams, mm -hmm. suppliers, and um, ultimately our customers. This is, uh, the, in a nutshell, I'd say that's really what we've been, we've been focusing on. Yeah, just talking about the internal part, I've seen a lot of growth just internally as a team, right? There's tough times where this is when you need your, your team most, True. right? Lean on each other. Yeah, and absolutely. We have, our, we have daily meetings. We have meetings every morning where we can you know, support each other, help each other. We're always asking, how can I help you? bounce ideas off of each other and you know it, it creates a, a kind of a culture of accountability to each other and that's that's how we've been seeing some success yeah that's very good now i'm going to ask a question and i'd like to know as much as i can but i understand there's limitations what's new and upcoming at the talk what can you share about <coughs> new developments new projects new products yeah actually uh, <laughs> There, we, have, we do have a lot going on. Um, because of this, obviously, it hasn't been a great time. Um, and a lot of people have yes. experienced a lot of hardship. But if we've taken this as the opportunity that it is, we have started to focus on developing new products and also um, entering into new markets. So alternative fuels has been a, a really large opportunity for us. We recently, not applicable to the analytical world, but um, to alternative fuels, we recently obtained EC79, which allows our product to be used on hydrogen-powered oh. um, vehicles. So both commercial, heavy industrial, um, on-road vehicles. So talking about this in the, um, in the biofuel, so especially when you talk biodiesel and bio uh, jet fuel, those are the two most common that, I, that I've been dealing with, you know, the part of its composition, amongst other things, the faint content, makes it that regular stainless just gets eaten through over time. So uh, companies go to, I would say, different grades of, of material. Is that something that you guys have also started getting into? Yes, absolutely. I mentioned earlier that uh, exotic materials is, is one of our strengths. It is centered around our solutions-based mindset. So we have a, a large stock of, of product, um, raw material from Hasseloy to Inconel, mm -hmm. Monel, um, to be able to respond quickly for products, opportunities, and situations like that. Absolutely. For the alternative fuel industry that we've really been going after, which is largely based around hydrogen, mm -hmm. it's still a 316, 316 or 316 okay. L, um, depending on the, the vehicle. And that's, a, I would say, also our standard grade um, that Beaker and even the, the, our probes are, are typically 316 or 316 L. Okay. Yeah, that's also what we commonly use. Or use. Yeah, so um, I, I'd say 
the the focus on new markets uh, obviously there's been a lot of new activity a lot of new labs around the country and globally for pharmaceuticals um, because there's been a whole lot of trial oh of course taking place Um, so we found a lot of good opportunity there Uh, and then obviously we We've been spending some time, as you saw at the beginning of the presentation, we've been spending quite a bit of time and resources developing um, developing newer facilities for manufacturing, yes. expanding our existing facilities, um, and there's a whole lot that goes into that, from, <laughs> from supply chain to I would assume expanding so. our team. I would so. Um, so yeah, we've, we've had quite a bit going on. What about Bartek? So Bartek is also having to adapt this new world. Sure. And uh, well, what we're doing now is part of it, this, this adaptation, because as you were seeing, as you were saying, well, you can't really see people in person at this time, or it, it's just picking up. So we need to find new ways to reach out to customers. And so we're, we started with this online platform so that we can, well, reach out to customers and do a lot of that prospecting. So the, the thought behind uh, this entire project, which includes the Twin Asia and Beyond show, is well, first to spread out the word, and second, whenever we do get into early prospecting, we can just share some some videos, some online information where you have all the content you would normally you would normally provide. So you know we have we have other videos and there's other recordings where we go over maybe some technical aspects, some sales sure. aspects, some sales training. So. We can't travel or we can't go see people, so we have to find a way for people to be able to see us. And this this is the outcome. Yeah. This Great. is the outcome. And it's I'm not gonna say it's been easy. There's been a lot, lot of trial and error. There's been, you know, from both a material standpoint, from a, us getting familiarized with the recordings, the green screen, which obviously, you know, the viewer cannot see, but it's there, <laughs> trust me. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's been a learning curve. It's been interesting. It's uh, it's growing. Uh, it's definitely changing. But I certainly hope it's uh, it's going in the right way. I'll put it like that. The yeah, the traditional way of doing business is definitely not going to be applicable in the future. And uh, yeah, I agree with you on that. I think that is behind us. The traditional way of doing business is definitely behind yeah, us. Yeah, it's either you know you change or you die. That's right. So. Yeah. We opted for the first option. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> yeah, it's a good decision. Yeah. Well, guys, um, appreciate you coming. Uh, thanks a lot for sharing all of this with us. It's been very informative. Uh, I look forward on working with other projects with you guys, and I can only say thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 thanks uh, again thank for having us on. And thank you all. We'll be seeing you soon for another episode of Two Analysts and Beyond. Take care. Bye.